Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to take a look at some finished armies. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in learned Vinci V style. So it's no secret that I love painting armies. I have 20, 21 painted armies for Warhammer, uh, both, you know, Fantasy, Age of Sigmar, uh, 40k, so on and so forth. I just find it a really fun thing to do, and I've been painting for years and years. And I thought it'd be a neat thing to do to look back at some of these armies, share some photos of some of my favorite units and pieces um, from those armies with you, and talk about what they are and why I like them and that kind of thing. Uh, now obviously there's way too many to do in a single video, so I figured what we'd do is we'd break them up. So this is going to be the first three armies uh, that I have uh, that I thought I'd share. Uh, and what's really great about this is a lot of these were done over years and distance and time. So it'll be great to look back and see them all and what I was thinking at the time and hopefully inspire you uh, for your own armies and work at home. So, hey, let's take a look and let's get into some armies. All right, first up, we've got the Iron Jaws. Now, I love Iron Jaws. A simple confession, for the first, gosh, almost 20 years of me playing Warhammer, I really had no interest in green skins of any kind. In fact, everything that we would now call destruction was kind of uninteresting to me. And when Iron Jaws came out, they just really, really uh, hit for me. Uh, Tom and I had sort of a cool list that was a pullback on old Dogs of War units, and we it just inspired me like nothing ever had. And they've become one of my favorite armies, uh, something that I play a lot and really have a great time with. So I thought it'd be good to take a look at these maybe first up, as they are not my favorite. We'll get to that. That's for a later video but they're one of my favorites. So first up, we have uh, some Brutes. These guys are, of course, one of the cores of the army. Um, I love these Brutes. I really, this is these, this is the unit that sold the army for me. Um, they're big, they're hulking, the like sort of fist pounded armor that they wear really sells that. And Brutes were some of the first things I painted uh, for the army, uh, where I really kind of learned the color scheme and what I wanted to do and uh, developed the, all the different freehand patterns and, and things like that that would eventually become the, the staples of the army. But the Brutes to me still hold up. Just they're such a great silhouette and good looking unit. Um, just wish they were a little better in the game, but that's okay. They're still rule. Next up, we have the, uh, our pigs. And I'm actually gonna go through two different kinds of pigs. So we'll start with the normal pigs. Uh, these are our classic pig riders. A lot of my army here with the Iron Jaws has some very minimal conversions. Um, so you'll notice just a couple small changes here and there. I didn't really feel the need to go too hard into the paint for most of the units. This is what I would call a lightly, maybe occasionally moderately customized army. We'll look at the heavily customized thing later uh, in Iron Jaws. But I really think the pigs are super cool. Like they're so stocky and big. One of the really funny things about pigs and sort of scale creep over time is that the the pigs, the, the regular Gorgruntas, are about the same size as the steam tank is from when I started playing back in the 90s. In fact, it's they're bigger. So the pig, the physical pig, is bigger than what we used to use as a tank, which is hilarious to me. Uh, on the more interesting conversions, I also wanted to have more than just pig riders, so I stole some birds because uh, we wanted the whole... Uh, breakfast palette. We gotta have our. We gotta have. If we're gonna have bacon, we gotta have eggs. And uh, so I sold some birds from Stormcast and and some of my uh, some of my Gorgruntas or pig riders. But I wanted the individual units to feel separate and interesting uh, and different. And so this is kind of how I went with that. These were really fun. I actually really like these birds as models. Um, I just don't particularly care for them in the Stormcast army. So why not use them here? Uh, and it's just great because then I, my pigs are easily set apart and yet still no one really has an issue identifying what they are. It's one of those uh, really fun proxies to me because no one's going to confuse, wait, who are the mounted orcs? There's only one mounted unit like that in the army, so it's very easy. Um, so those are my pigs, and I, I really like the unit. They've gone to lots of tournaments with me and, and are a lot of fun. All right, next up is the Mega Boss or Mega Bosses on foot. Uh... This is the silhouette, the, the staple of the army. Um, I love the Mega Boss on foot. I have multiples of them, as you see here, converted. 
they are an incredible chance to just experiment and change them around. Again, every one of these has some minor conversions on them. They still very much look like the thing. We're not off in crazy town, but I really, really love this guy. Doing the banner for this guy was uh, really a, a fun, unique experiment because I painted it completely through stippling. Like all of that was done solely through stippling to kind of make this star pattern of a, of a piece of art I had seen in one of the books. And I think it came out really cool. Uh, and so it was just a chance to really experiment. And their frame is so big. They're so hulking. They absolutely feel like monstrous and heroic and orcish in a way that almost nothing else has. Uh, and so I just, I really, really love these guys. Next up, we have uh, the newest addition to the army, which is Big Pig. Oh yeah, Big Pig, baby. You gotta love him. Uh, this is the model we had all been screaming and hoping and gnashing our teeth for for years. Uh, obviously, this guy went up on Warhammer Community. He does also feature in a video, which is linked up there. And uh, so if you want to see how I painted him, or at least the main elements, you can check that out. Um, the fun part about Big Pig was coming back to him about five years after I had painted the rest of the army, and then trying to actually replicate the original color scheme. I had some idea, I had recorded videos of it, so I actually went back and watched my own videos as to what I had done and when. Uh, one of the helpful things about having a channel is that you can always go back and reference your old paint job, so uh, I guess that's useful. But this guy is so freaking cool. I love playing him. I love the just immense size of this thing. Like, it is so big being on that 120 mil chariot base. It just has this weight. It's thick. It's solid. It's got a chunk factor to it that I really, really love. So, um, again, pretty minimal on the conversions on this one, uh, but that opens the door to our real Mega Boss. So the last piece we're going to take a look at here today is the full-on Mega Boss on Maw Crusher. This guy is obviously the centerpiece of the army. Um, I only have one of these guys, and I've painted more, as you saw in videos, but that I gave away to Tyler, uh, my co-host on Warhammer Weekly. But this guy is converted. He's part bird, part maw crusher. I gave him wings. He has the banner pole. He's just a million things going on. This was just me taking a very expensive model and then a couple other very expensive models and chopping them to pieces and putting them back together to see what I could do. Uh, it really, this is truly the most converted thing in the army. And it's a great example of the fun you can have when you don't worry as much about the sort of like, oh, well, let's just take a chance. Let's just experiment. Let's see what we can do. And I just kept building and kept modeling pieces and adding pieces and changing things around and green stuffing until I got to a place that I thought looked pretty cool. And, you know, he really stands apart. He's big. He's different. He's unique. There really is nothing else like him I've ever seen at a tournament that I've gone to or, you know, any kind of group setting. So I enjoy the opportunity to make a really unique model, especially as a centerpiece. And I think that's where people should take the opportunity. Like if you're going to convert, honestly, your centerpieces or your characters, like the things that stand out and are important are some of the most fun things to convert because they already stand apart from the army and are unique. And so when you convert them, it just elevates that. I think it's hard for people to do that because, I mean, you know, this kit's like more than $100 or something base. And then there's Lord of Change in there as well, which is another like $100 kit. It's hard to like sit down and say, I'm going to just start taking a saw to this thing. And there's, you know, no going back. Like if I screw this up, that's it. You know, I, I ruined the kit. And I think that can be scary and, and reasonably so. But what I'll say is the payoff on the other side is really worth it in having a fun, unique, interesting model. So, I would recommend. Speaking of heavy conversions, let's get to the next army, which is my Cities of Sigmar Tempest I army. Now, honestly, this thing's probably retired, and I wanted to give it a good send-off, because this army had a lot of love put into it. Um, I converted this for the, basically, right after the Cities book in 2nd edition came out. And... It's called Whirlwind's Edge. I made up a whole backstory for it. I have like a book written about the story, the people who live there and that I actually made up a little role-playing setting for it as well that I've, I've used like in D&D. So, I mean, I'm pretty heavily invested, I think, in the, the overall nerdiness and immersion of this. 
And I was just fascinated by the ability to bring together Cities units, KO units, and Stormcast units all under one banner. And I thought that would make for a really cool mechanical force where everything could be converted. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start with my Outriders and, and Pistoliers. Um, these guys are obviously built off of the um, motorcycle troops from 40k from the Gene Stealer cult. And so just a lot of the motorcycles and then, you know, knights and things that look a little more fantasy riding them with, with the appropriate pistols and guns. And they are really the only battle line I have. What interested me in this army, this is an army where I built basically like no battle line. I have 15 of these guys and that's it. It's these riders or nothing. And they just seemed really appropriate. They were like the one that worked. I wanted it to be a very mechanized mobile force. Uh, and so they, the fact that they don't exist anymore means basically I have no battle line. Now this is actually the second quote unquote empire cities army I built, but the first one I have is also full of troops that have all been retired. <laughs> so I have like two versions of this army that have, that have been retired away. I'm still proud of this thing. I'm still proud of these guys. Okay. I guess I do have one other battle line option still, so that's all right. And that's steam tanks. Now, here I'm showing you my Whirlwind's Edge steam tanks, which I have two of them. Uh, one of them was originally built to be flying because at the time you could give the steam tank commander a thing that made him fly. But of course, that went away. Uh, I do have four regular uh, like plastic and metal steam tanks as well from the older Empire models. So all told, I could, I guess, do a full army of, um, of steam tank battle lines. So we're back in the mix. Um, but these guys were really fun. So now we're getting into the part of the army that's like really heavily converted. And all these steam tanks and everything you're going to see from here is converted just out of a lot of terrain and bits and plasticard and stuff like that. I, I just built all this stuff from scratch, effectively. Most of these kits, with the exception of one we're going to look at, doesn't actually have much underlying it. It's, it's all just completely random stuff uh, that I thought looked cool and then turned into ships and boats and planes and walkers and things like that. So this is one where this is actually a terrain piece um, that's been converted over and has become the steam tank. And I really like how they came out. Um, speaking of weird conversions, uh, my Luminarch and my Huraconum. Uh, these are also built off of some of the 40k um, walkers uh, out of Admech and such. Um, but, you know, these obviously have a lot of other pieces on them. I did give them the real... I guess, guns or a component that looks like the real component, I suppose, so they could be easily told apart. When you're doing such heavy, heavy proxies like these, I think it is important to have some signifier of the real thing on your heavily converted proxy. So, for example, a Luminarch has the zippy-dippy, multi-factor, refractal, magnifying glass, laser beam cannon, whatever. And... Uh, I wanted that there so that if people know the regular Luminarc, they still see that visual signifier and know, okay, the, despite the fact it's a weird Onager walker or whatever the heck this real kid is, it it's still good. They're going to be able to easily pick it out of my force and know this is the Luminarc. Um, I really like these. Uh, I joke often that I was trying to make a Luminarc and accidentally made like a flea from Battletech. Uh, so I guess I did get to paint a giant mech, one that isn't tiny and ugly. All right. Next up is one of my favorite pieces from this army. Again, this was made from like a lot of plastic art and terrain and stuff like that, um, as well as kit bits. But this is my ironclad. Uh, so technically, this is a big KO unit. But again, you could just have KO units in your army at the time. And I love this ironclad. I really like how this came out. It's big. Um, like this is much bigger than the normal ironclad, but it still fits reasonably on the base. Uh, and it's elevated enough that it doesn't cause problems. This thing just feels like a gunship to me. And that's what I wanted. I wanted this feeling of like this machine of war. Uh, something like if you've ever watched the uh, new Battlestar Galactica, there's a moment in the original pilot slash miniseries when the Galactica actually gets uh, restocked with all its weapons and then floats up in the atmosphere to the base stars. And, and Adama says like all all stations weapons free and just like every gun swings around every cannon and this thing just puts out like this wall of fire that goes up and just starts shredding the enemy base stars 
that's what's in my head every time I pilot this thing around the table. Where I can just like all these different guns, I just want to just like boom, 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 boom. Everything's sounding off and just creating this like fire that just shreds the enemies. So I love this thing. It was so much fun to convert. I love doing vehicles. Um, the whole scale modeling challenge of it is really different and vehicles really appealed to me. And that was kind of the fun of this army, a chance to use scale modeling tools, techniques, tricks, weathering, and all of that stuff on uh, AOS models, which is just a really, really cool, unique thing. Which leads me to my last piece, which is my general on Griffin. As you can see here, this is the SS Griffin. Uh, and I used a Stormcast body and turned it into like a more generic Empire hero who's just kind of bigger. And he's up on the, the uh, bow of the ship. How exactly the ship is flying? I don't know. I assume it's just sentient or magic. Lots of things in, in AOS are just magical vehicles that drive themselves around. So why not a boat as well? Uh, but this guy's sort of the leader of my army and... Uh, I thought it was just always fun. I always liked the General on Griffin as a model, and I thought it was really funny to turn a frigate, you know, sort of frame and then modify it, put wings on it, and call it the SS Griffin. So, there you go. All right, now we go from heavily converted to not converted at all. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to include this as the last army. This is my Daughters of Cain. Let's jump right in with the Sisters of Slaughter. Uh, so I don't really like the Witch Elf and Sisters type of units in this army. That's not what got me interested. I got interested in Daughters after the relaunch during AOS. And that initial launch trailer is still maybe the greatest launch trailer for an army they've ever done. They've never topped it. And uh, so it was like the Snake Ladies and the Canary and all that that drew me in. But you got to have a little bit of Sisters. So these are my Sisters. They're, they're pretty basic. But I'm happy enough with how they came out. Now let's get to the real exciting thing, which is the Malusai. This is what sold me on the army. The sort of Gorgon-esque snake ladies, I was here for this a thousand percent. Most of my army and most time when I play it, my battle line is actually snake ladies. I have a lot of these girls and I just think they're really beautiful models. The sculpts are so uh, elegant and yet deadly and dangerous looking. I've always loved the sort of Medusa Gorgon look. I just think it's a really cool um, sort of piece of mythology and, and I love how it translates over here. Uh, and so these girls are really great. They were really fun to paint. And uh, I like I, I just it really enjoyed doing all these snake ladies. I thought they were they're time consuming, but I, I had a legitimate great time painting them. Uh, next up is Canary. Uh, and these were really fun. Again, these are things that actually got a lot of love put into them. I took one of my units of Canary to Golden Demon one year, and actually one of my Golden Demons I, I won with these Canary, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's cool to have, like, a Golden Demon unit in your army. That's fun. Uh, very proud of that, uh, and what, we, what I accomplished that year. And the Canary, again, just I love them because they're different. It's sort of the fly, my pretties fly type of thing. Love the look of the wings. Very proud of how they came out and, and, and what, what I managed to uh, accomplish with them. Let's talk heroes. That means it's time for our Slaughter Queen on Cauldron. Now, this has never really been the best unit. Most people always ran Hag Queens on Cauldron. But I think the Slaughter Queen is so awesome. Uh, I always loved uh, the, the Slaughter Queen just like as a look, as a model. I just think it's super cool, the concept behind the thing. And so this usually shows up in my army. No matter how good daughters have always been on the table, I've always played a less than optimal version of the army because it's what I like to play. And it's the units that I really liked. Uh, again, these were really interesting and fun to paint because the cauldron is such a unique frame and interesting... Uh, sort of shape and all these like sharp edges so lots of edge highlighting you know added like the freehand runes and stuff crawling up the side because i wanted some amount of visual interest and to push the pink out over the rest of the surface uh to make sure that there was sort of the color triangles of the girls were well represented no matter what angle you were looking at and so i'm really happy with how how this one uh, came out i just think it's a a fun quasi centerpiece for the army i say quasi centerpiece because the real centerpiece and the last thing that we're looking at, no longer shall, shall she be denied. That's right. It's Marathi. Um, this model, I really love Marathi. I mean, this has got to be like one of the all-time 
greatest figures that they've ever sculpted. I don't know who was the sculptor responsible for this. Whoever you are, hey, uh, I'll, I'll buy you a drink next time I'm over there. Uh, this is one of my favorite models of all time. I would easily say it's one of my top 10 models that has ever been produced by uh, Games Workshop. I think it is incredible. Uh, I loved painting and creating the impression of the ridges down her belly, like the sort of uh, using contouring to create the impression of rising and falling in the overall texture of her belly. Um, I loved like the, the her musculature is so well defined. The wings were really fun to paint. Her face is very expressive and clean, feminine, and yet uh, like absolutely terrifying. It's just a masterpiece from top to bottom. I, I hope I did it service um, with my paint job. I really tried. Looking back on it now, and in fact, looking back on most of these things, there's a lot more I feel like I could do or I could do better. Uh, but I'm still happy with what I accomplished at the time. There you go. That's the three armies I wanted to share with you today. I hope you found this little uh, journey through some of my armies interesting. If you want to see more of this, hey, give me a comment down below. I, like I said, I have 20 armies, and I, I do hope to share more with you over time. If you've got questions about any of the forces that I shared here, or my conversions, or anything like that, feel free to drop that down in the comments. But tell me what you thought of this. Uh, and if you liked it, give it a like. Um, subscribe for more hobby cheating. We'll be back next Saturday with a more traditional video. Uh, but we have new videos here every week. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can share these videos with your friends. You can check out the merch store down below. We've got lots of new merch in there, uh, new shirts and stuff like that for the show, uh, as well as mouse pads and cups and everything else you could want. Uh, there's also, of course, a Patreon. That Patreon's focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Maybe you need some motivation to get your army done. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one. And we'll see you next time.